North America has seen its fair share of natural disasters, and they are events the world will forever remember. It has had hurricanes like Katrina flooding everything in sight, earthquakes shaking cities to their core, and wildfires blazing through forests nonstop. But guess what? There's something even bigger coming our way. Experts are saying there's a disaster on the horizon that could make all those past events look like child's play. A disaster so unprecedented, it could redefine our understanding of devastation. Stick around, because we're diving into the jaw-dropping details of what might just be North America's biggest disaster ever. What is this disaster? The San Andreas Fault is one of the most famous and significant fault lines in the world, stretching over 800 miles through California. This massive crack in the Earth's crust marks the boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. The plates are constantly moving, yet slowly, at a rate of about one to two inches per year. This movement causes a lot of stress to build up along the fault line. When this stress is finally released, it results in earthquakes, which can be incredibly powerful and destructive. On average, the San Andreas Fault ruptures every 150 years. What's particularly concerning about the San Andreas Fault is its location and the potential for massive quakes. The fault runs close to major cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco, putting millions of people at risk. Scientists have been studying the fault for years, and many believe that a significant earthquake sometimes referred to as the big one, is long overdue. The last major quake on the southern portion of the fault was in 1857, and the accumulated stress since then has only increased. History of this fault. Southern parts of the fault have remained inactive for over 200 years. This isn't the first time the San Andreas Fault has caused an eruption. 1857, Fort Tejon earthquake. Of the Golden State, Nestled between the Sierra Nevada and the coastal range lies the San Andreas Fault. The first major earthquake linked to the San Andreas Fault was the 1857 Fort Tejon earthquake, striking on January 9, 1857. It had an estimated magnitude of 7.9. The quake caused a massive rupture along the fault, stretching over 225 miles from Parkfield in Monterey County to Wrightwood in San Bernardino County. Thankfully, due to the sparse population at the time, the human casualties were minimal, with only two reported deaths. 1906 Earthquake The 1906 earthquake and fire leveled San Francisco in one of the worst natural disasters in American history. By its end, over 3,000 people had died, 80% of the city had been destroyed. The second major earthquake associated with the San Andreas Fault occurred in 1906 striking San Francisco on April 18th. This earthquake had a magnitude of approximately 7.9 and shook the city and surrounding areas violently. It caused about 3,000 deaths, making it one of the deadliest earthquakes in U.S. history. The quake was so powerful that it ruptured the ground for about 296 miles along the fault line. Loma Prieta earthquake. We have a major injury accident, Cypress and West Grand. They're advising major injuries. I was getting ready to... The most recent significant earthquake on the San Andreas Fault happened in 1989, known as the Loma Prita earthquake. It struck the San Francisco Bay Area on October 17th with a magnitude of 6.9. The quake caused severe shaking that lasted for about 15 seconds leading to 63 deaths and thousands of injuries. The damage was extensive, with the collapse of the Cypress Street Viaduct in Oakland and sections of the Bay Bridge. How do we know another disaster is about to happen? According to a 2008 federal report, the most likely scenario is a 7.8 magnitude quake that would rupture a 200-mile stretch along the southernmost part of the fault. Scientists have been keeping a close eye on the San Andreas Fault, and recent findings suggest that a major earthquake could be on the horizon. 
The southern part of the fault, especially near Los Angeles, hasn't had a big quake since 1857. This long period without activity means that stress has been building up over time. Experts use advanced tools like GPS and satellites to track movements and measure the stress levels along the fault. In 2023, a study stated that the fault is locked, loaded, and ready to go, meaning that the accumulated stress could lead to a significant earthquake. The major aqueduct networks that pump water into Southern California all cross the San Andreas Fault. There have also been numerous small earthquakes in the area, acting as warning signs. The U.S. Geological Survey has estimated a 75% chance of a magnitude 7.0 or greater earthquake hitting Southern California within the next 30 years. While predicting the exact timing of an earthquake is still tricky, the consistent data showing a high probability of a major quake has led officials and scientists to push for better preparedness measures. They are focusing on improving infrastructure, creating emergency response plans, and raising public awareness to reduce potential damage. If you're liking this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Preventive measures by scientists against the occurrence of this disaster. Oh, a team of renowned geologists compiled seismograph records of the earthquake from around the globe. Scientists are working tirelessly to minimize the impact of a potential major earthquake along the San Andreas Fault. While they can't stop earthquakes from happening, they can help reduce the damage through various measures. One key strategy is improving building codes to ensure structures are more resilient. Engineers and architects are designing buildings with flexible materials and foundations that can better withstand the shaking. Retrofitting older buildings is also a priority, reinforcing them to make them sturdier. Required the drilling of a sediment core from the middle of San Andreas, which the researchers examined. The researchers discovered a region where the biomarkers indicated war. Public education and preparedness are also essential components of the plan. Scientists and emergency management officials conduct regular drills and awareness campaigns to teach people what to do before, during, and after an earthquake. Communities are encouraged to have emergency kits, establish communication plans, and secure heavy furniture and appliances to prevent injuries. On a larger scale, researchers are mapping the fault in great detail using advanced technology, helping to identify the most vulnerable areas your own safety measures against the disaster. 55 gallons is the right amount for my, I have a family of four. That'll last us for two weeks. Canned food, you know, you have to be ready. Um, I would say it's best just to plan to stay sort of where you are. When it comes to staying safe during an earthquake, being prepared is super important. First, make sure your home is ready by securing heavy furniture and appliances so they don't tip over. Use brackets and straps to anchor bookshelves TVs, and water heaters to the walls. Create a family emergency plan with a meeting spot and a contact person outside your area. Also, put together an emergency kit with water, non-perishable food, flashlights, batteries, a first aid kit, and any necessary medications. Practicing earthquake drills at home can help everyone know what to do when the shaking starts. Place, you know, where are you going to meet? What are you going to do? have water ready. I have a 55 gallon drum full of water. There's some chemical additive I put in it so it's potable for five years. During an earthquake, quick actions can keep you safe. Drop to your hands and knees to avoid being knocked over and cover your head and neck to protect yourself from falling objects. If you can, get under a sturdy table or desk and hold on until the shaking stops. If there's no shelter nearby, move against an interior wall away from windows and cover your head with your arms. Stay inside until the shaking ends and it's safe to go outside. North America and previous natural disasters. Well, while scientists are trying to predict when the San Andreas Fault will cause an earthquake, let's take a journey to the past where North America faced natural disasters. Hurricane Katrina. Back in 2005, Hurricane Katrina swept through New Orleans and the Gulf Coast, causing catastrophic flooding and displacing thousands of people. 
The damage was estimated at over $100 billion, and the storm claimed more than 1,800 lives. Joplin Tornado. May 22nd, 2011. Another major disaster was the 2011 Joplin Tornado in Missouri, which was one of the deadliest tornadoes in U.S. history, with wind speeds exceeding 200 miles per hour. This EF5 tornado tore through the town, destroying homes, schools, and businesses. Over 150 people lost their lives, and the damages were pegged at around $2.8 billion. Great Chicago Farshaw. How red this guy was. They said that it was Judgment Day. Let's not forget the Great Chicago Fire of 1871, which, while not a natural disaster by modern definitions, was a massive calamity. A small fire quickly spread, destroying thousands of buildings, killing approximately 300 people, and leaving over 100,000 residents homeless. The fire reshaped the city and led to major changes in building codes and fire safety. Eruption of Mount St. Helens. 45 miles away. The blast took place about 1 o'clock this afternoon. It was the first volcanic eruption in this country since 1914. And who can overlook the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens in Washington? This volcanic eruption blasted away the north face of the mountain, leveling forests and sending ash across multiple states. The eruption killed 57 people and caused over a billion dollars in damage, drastically altering the landscape. Let us know your thoughts about this video in the comments. And remember to like and subscribe for more intriguing discoveries like this. See you in the next video.